popping everybody welcome back to jace lee thank you so much for joining me today because i have a very important video for you guys people were asking me like which residence should i choose to live in if i were to go to western university today i'm going to be answering all of those questions and i'm going to give you my personal recommendations on which res you should choose depending on what your style is. I understand that you can go to the Western Housing website and do a virtual tour of each residence and the rooms. This is a really great start and it shows you a lot. However, there are a lot of things that the website doesn't tell you or things that might not be apparent to you immediately. So today I'm going to be highlighting important points and going over things that you can only experience firsthand. To choose a rest to live at Western University, there are three main things that you should consider. Number one is personal preference. Number two is location and amenities. And number three is food selection and hours. I actually have a bunch of points that I'm going to say out on my computer over here. The fourth one is partying. Like I know I have to talk about this because if I don't talk about this, then people are not gonna be satisfied with my answer. Point number one is personal preference. So that's what you're comfortable with, what you like to live in in general. For example, for me, I know that I'm a night owl, plus I can't really like fall asleep with someone else in the room because any tiny noise, and I'm gonna be distracted and I won't be able to fall asleep. So for me, I would definitely have to choose like a single room, not a room with a roommate. For example, I would definitely choose the suite styles. So Elgin Hall or Essex Hall, or I can also do the single traditional style, which is Sogin, Medsid and Delaware Hall. Another thing that you have to take into consideration is whether you want a roommate or not. So I know that some people, they want someone to be there so that they're not gonna be as lonely. So definitely, if you like having a roommate, then definitely go with the hybrid styles, which is Ontario Hall and Perth Hall, or you can go with the traditional double rooms, which is in Sogin, Medsid, and Delaware Hall. Also, keep in mind, if you do the traditional styles, you have to share a washroom with 20 other people on your floor. And I've heard stories of people jacking off in the washrooms when they're taking a shower, which is kind of disgusting. And like the drains get all like clogged up and stuff. So if that's not you, then don't go traditional. So if you like having your own personal washrooms or if you just have like a lot of like shampoos and stuff that you take into the shower, then go with the hybrid styles or you can go with the sweet styles. For me, talk about personal preference. Um, I chose Elgin Hall because I can't really fall asleep if someone else is in the room with me, I get like distracted like super easily. I like that there was a lot of privacy because I had my own room. Another thing to keep in mind is if you like privacy, then definitely go with the single rooms because let's say you wanna have a friend over and you share a double room, then I don't know, you have to like kick your roommate out or something. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention when I was recording this video, in the suite styles, there are cleaners that come into your room once a month to clean your room, washroom, kitchen, places like that. So definitely keep that in mind. Also in the sweet styles, there is a kitchen. So if cooking is a really big part of your life, then definitely also consider going for a sweet style because the traditional styles and the hybrid styles don't have a kitchen. Also many people don't know this, but Essex actually has a gaming room. Another thing to keep into consideration is that there are faculty specific floors in specific residences. So for example, Essex Hall has an engineering floor I think also Sogin has an engineering floor. The Western Housing website does have a list of faculty specific floors, which I will show on screen and I will also link it down in the description below. So if being with your faculty is a really important aspect of your life, then definitely check those out. The next thing I'm gonna touch upon, so point number two is location and amenities. What I mean by that is what's around. Maybe it could be food, maybe it could be convenience stores, for example. On the east side of campus, we have Elgin Hall and we have Medsid. So around that area, there is a convenience store, there is a dispensary if you're into that, there's TD Bank, there's a shawarma place, there's a pizza place. So it's honestly like pretty lit, but those places on the west side don't open for 24 seven. So if you're up at like 3 a.m., then the convenience store will be closed. But if you live on the east side of campus, which doesn't include Sogin, which means there's Essex Hall, London Hall, Perth Hall, and Ontario Hall. If you live in those residents, there is a 24 hour subway, which is really blessed. There's also a 24 hour 7-Eleven so you can get your convenience store stuff. Other than 7-Eleven and Subway, there's also like a shawarma place and there, I think there's a pharmacy. There are also other food places that are nearby. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that the Western Recreation Center is also in that same corner. 
All of the reses do have gyms. However, none of the gyms, I think, have any squatting racks. But the Western Recreation Center is a facility that is designed for working out. There's like a hockey arena, there's basketball court, there's a swimming pool, and the gym is actually really nice and there's a squatting rack. So if working out is a really big part of your life, then definitely keep this into consideration. I lived at Elgin Hall, so if I did want to go to the Western Recreation Center, I would have to walk all the way to the other side of campus, which can sucked. So I think the intersection of where Western Road and Philip Aziz meet is honestly a pretty blessed intersection because you can have food, snacks, drinks for days. But the odd one out is definitely gonna be Sogin because Sogin is like kind of in the middle of nowhere. There aren't like food places. So if you do wanna go to the subway, it's gonna be like a, like a 20, 15 to 20 minute walk. Another thing is Delaware Hall definitely is the best location on campus because it is closest to pretty much everything. It is in the middle of campus, which means you can go pretty much anywhere on campus pretty quickly relative to the other residences. Another thing to keep in mind is the residence food. So some of the reses actually close at 7.30 p.m. while others have a snack bar that open from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. The reses that include a snack bar include Sogin, Ontario Hall, Perth, Midsid, and I think Delaware, which means the ones that don't have a snack bar. So Elgin Hall and Essex Hall, they have to go to the neighboring reses so that they can eat at the snack bar. So for me, I lived at Elgin Hall, so I crossed the street after 8 p.m. to go to Metsid so that I can grab some late night snacks. Another thing to keep into consideration is the variety of food. So some kitchens are bigger than other kitchens. Like in Ohal, they have an absolutely massive kitchen and they renovate it, it looks really beautiful. And they have a very big food selection. So there's pizza, there's sushi, there's like, noodle bars, smoothie bars, so there's a lot of things. One of the smaller reses is Elgin Hall, so I was in Elgin Hall, and the food choices were a little bit smaller, so if food is a really big thing for you, then my recommendation, the top three food reses, in my opinion, I think number one would be Ontario Hall, I would say. Number two would be Sogin, because their kitchen is pretty big. And number three might be Perth, because Perth their kitchen is fairly big and they have a pretty good food selection. And then the last point I'm gonna touch on is partying because I know if I don't talk about partying, then people aren't gonna be satisfied with my answer. So partying, it really doesn't depend on which res you're in. It really depends on the type of people that are in your res. Some people might be bold enough to throw their own parties and invite a lot of people. Then in that case, that residence would have big parties. But historically, Sogin is very famous for their parties. Sogin is nicknamed the zoo because it has a lot of parties, plus there's a lot of people, and people do a lot of crazy things in Sogin. So if you're a person that doesn't like to party, then definitely don't go to Sogin because if you're trying to study, like on the weekends, weekdays, it, it might be kind of hard to study because there would be a lot of noise, music, um, people throwing stuff around. So yeah, if you don't like to party, don't go to Sogin. And if you're a person that likes to have a quiet space, honestly, Elgin Hall is a pretty boring res, like nothing really goes on really. Also, Perth is also not that talked about. There aren't that many parties there. So if you're a person that likes a nice, quiet, boring res, then definitely go to Perth or Elgin Hall. Metsid is also pretty good for the parties, I heard and Ohal is also pretty good. But yeah, personally, I would say go for the suite styles because it gives you that layer of privacy. Plus you also have roommates, but they just live in different like rooms within that suite. Plus it's private. If you want only your friends in one place at once, then you can have them in the lounge of your suite style and you can enjoy the lounge plus privacy. I honestly think that's pretty much all I have to say. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try my best to respond to them. If you're new to JC, then definitely click that subscribe button. And while you're at it, click that like button. Anyways, this is Jason signing out of JCD. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the very next video. Peace.